All right. Welcome to uh, the Sommelier Finance uh, 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 AMA with uh, Sunny about osmosis. Um, for people who have been living under a rock, uh, osmosis is uh, uh, roughly a little over, you know, t uh, a week old, uh, brand new, first IBC enabled automated market maker. Uh, create a lot of new exciting opportunities for liquidity providers, for farming, for uh, locking up liquidity. Really the first experience in the Cosmos IBC world that we've all been waiting for for five years. Um, and uh, did a bunch of really awesome stuff in terms of a gamified airdrop, um, some pretty sophisticated LP reward mechanisms, uh, and you know, vast political debates uh, mm -hmm. have already broken out uh, in the uh, in the osmosis community, and it's all very exciting. Uh, so welcome, Sunny. Thank you for having me on. So, um, what we what we want to do is we want to focus on uh, in these in these uh, AMAs about really like liquidity provider opportunities, uh, like where the uh, 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 what's out there you know this is a great place to find alpha um mm -hmm. the uh yeah i mean so just uh you know maybe talk a little bit about you know uh you know how osmosis has been thinking about liquidity providers uh about their needs you know the amm space is 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 like vastly expanding at like sort of an exponential clip in terms of different lp experiences and and how does how does osmosis think about all of this yeah. Uh, yeah. So osmosis has really, you know, we've taken the, so when, when we started it, one of our like sayings that we were having was like, you know, as easy as possible for the users, but give power tools to the LPs. Uh, we want to make sure that LPs like, so, so osmosis kind of started as this thing, like year, uh, one of the earliest instantiations was about a year ago, a year and a half ago, I wrote this blog post called Dowerfying Uniswap Pools where basically I said, hey, Uniswap pools, Uniswap's really cool and this AMM thing seems really interesting, but they're way too simple and we need to have just like way more powerful uh, curves and stuff. And at that time, Uniswap was basically the only AMM that existed. Uh, yeah, since so, then- So what's the curve of an AMM just to like- Yeah, so a curve of an AMM, that. yeah, mm -hmm. so a curve of an AMM is basically, you know, you can call it, you can think of it as it's the algorithm that it uses to do market making and Uniswap basically uses this algorithm called, you know, we can call it X times Y equals K. What it basically has to do meet what it means is it just has quantities of assets in its pool and it uses the relative quantities to do pricing. It, it this thing works surprisingly well, like you wouldn't expect it to work this well, but it, somehow it does. But but it's also like one of the simplest possible uh, algorithms that you could be using. And it, it, what's beautiful about it is that it works so well for being so simple. Um, but there are things that I think that could be done better. Uh, and especially when it comes to different asset types, I think different styles of curves might be needed. And so after that post came out, uh, you know, within a few months, um, there was, you suddenly had like the two big new entrances, which was balancer protocol and curve protocol. And so curve basically said like, yeah, you're right. Um, different types of uh, asset pairs do need different types of curves. And they came up with this idea called a constant sum, which is just way better for assets that are mean reverting, which means that they, you know, a stable coin to a stable coin or some type of Bitcoin to a different type of Bitcoin. And you can have these like, you know, this is optimized for market making the like two assets that should be relatively similarly priced. Then, and then meanwhile, Balancer, they took Uniswap's thing and said, Hey, we know how to generalize this a lot where, you know, balance Uniswap said, Hey, you have to have 50, 50, uh, 50% of one asset in a pool and 50% of the other asset in the pool. Balancer said, hey, why, why do we have to do that? What if we made it 80-20 or 10-90 or 30-70? Um, and then they also said, hey, you know, we so, can also- So what are the consequences of that? Because I, 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 I'll actually, like, I haven't looked into it. And I'm LP, I get a bunch of pools on osmosis, but like, mm -hmm. 
still like what what are these uh what do these ratios mean how does that how does that affect uh traders how does that affect liquidity providers yeah so from the liquidity providers standpoint um the what it means is that you can be more exposed to one asset than the other so let's say you go into a pool that's 80 20 um osmo to atoms right uh what that means is that you have to let's say and you let's say you had a million dollars to provide liquidity with that means you're putting down eight hundred thousand dollars worth of osmo and only two hundred thousand dollars worth of atoms and this makes sense it's what you'd want to do if you were more bullish on osmo than atoms uh because you want to basically have your portfolio uh still weighted towards holding more osmo than atoms um what it also it also has impact on the impermanence loss that you take uh and, and to explain that you can kind of look at it from the other direction which is what 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 happens to the traders what happens when you have a higher weighted pool is that the slippage of on when you're buying that buying or selling that asset uh decreases meanwhile when you're buying and selling the asset on the with the lower weight, the slippage gets magnified. So for every $1 that you buy of the lower weight asset, it will move the price more than if you had bought $1 on a 50-50 pool. And then say, and then, you know, the converse for the higher weighted asset. And then this also has the, you know, impact on the, uh, in, in, on the IL side as well, because the, the asset that has a higher weight kind of you you because you're weighted more heavily towards it you're you're taking on less IL based off of how you know if the price moves more because you're still because the fact that you have more weight and you that you can absorb more uh sort of changes in demand there. It's very, very cool. Um so you know on osmosis right now we see a bunch of different pools. Um uh I think you know the the Adam Osmo pool is a 50-50 pool, so that's uh, uh, the big pool in terms of volume, uh, as one would sort of expect. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that uh, 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 changed. Um, maybe uh, just like uh, uh, for for people who don't know, like what what is the role of IBC in this whole system? Uh, you know, IBC has been this thing. Cosmos has been working on it for five years. Uh, mm -hmm. like how, how does IBC like play a role in forming these pools? Yeah. So IBC is how you get assets onto this chain in the first place. So unlike something on a, like Ethereum where there's, you know, all the assets already are there and, you know, you can just make a pool using any two ERC twenties, um, on osmosis, you know, there's only one asset on the chain or well, okay, technically two assets on the chain, but the. But to, in order to like make a pool with Osmo and Atoms, for example, there's no Atoms on this chain until you bring them over via IBC. And so one of the things we spent a lot of time doing with Osmosis is really getting the UX and user flow around IBC to be as simple as possible. Um, and so if you go on our like main website, web page, uh, I don't think we really even mentioned the word IBC anywhere. Uh, we kind of just have it laid out like a normal deposit and withdrawals page that you'll normally see on a centralized exchange. And so what, what you can do is a user, a user will go in, go to the assets page, click deposit um, and, for whichever asset they want. And then, you know, our, our web page is very tightly integrated with Kepler. Uh, well, at, in the sense that, you know, it's not like Kepler integrates with the web page, but the web page definitely makes very good use of a lot of the features that Kepler um, provides. For, for context, uh, the Kepler team is also the Osmosis team. So, you know, we're, we're working on both of these products. Um, and so, you know, make, taking advantage of this whole, like, suggest chain feature that Kepler has, we, we make it as, we basically make it easy for the user to go ahead and make a transaction on the other's chain and, like, have the assets be automatically IBC'd over. Uh, and so once they're on the, this chain, then, a user will have, you know, if they have both Osmo in their account and they, they have this IBC atoms over, now they can take these two assets and put them in the pool together. So what you're telling me is that all I need to do to get a new asset on Osmosis is get a Cosmos chain up and connect over IBC. Correct. That's um, it. 
That's yep. the and th- that's the TLDR. And if if I'm part of a Cosmos chain, all I need to do is get connected by IBC, uh, uh, get my uh, uh, get a pool created, uh, and then I'm I'm off to the races. Yep, basically. Uh, obviously, there's some you know a little uh, extra step that we did around some of the UX stuff where you just have to get you just have to make a PR to add yourself to the asset list. This is just how the front end knows uh, what asset you know it is, and it can provide more helpful data to the users uh, of like, oh, this is the asset. But you, you know, if you don't want to be integrated into our front end, you can always any, you know anyone can make it another front end, and you can you can make a front end that's specifically just for trading your own asset if you want and still use all the osmosis infrastructure. Awesome. Okay. So we have these like, like awesome APYs on the pools page as well. So where do those APYs come from? Uh, how do Osmo tokenomics work? Like let's, let's talk a little bit about those things. Mm -hmm. So the APYs are coming from, uh, currently from Osmo liquidity rewards. And hopefully by the end of the day, uh, additional liquidity rewards as well, which we'll get into. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Osmo liquidity rewards. So the token distribution of Osmo works as follows. There is a total supply of $1 billion that will ever be, uh, 1 billion tokens that will ever be minted. Of that, 100 million were, was existed in Genesis, which was distributed uh, to sort of the strategic reserve, which is, as well as the quadratic fair drop. Uh, and so basically, you know, most of the tokens are in the hands of atom holders. Uh, and, you know, you can treat this, you know, we, 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 we treat this as this sort of like an invite to atom holders to come in and be part of the osmosis community. Now, how do they, how do they come in and be part of the osmosis community is uh, every year, every day, we have these daily epochs, which mint uh, new tokens and release them uh, to a couple of different categories. So the first is the community pool, uh, which uh, you know people sh- are, should be familiar with because it's pretty standard in Cosmos chains. The second is staking rewards. Of, so 25% of rewards go to the staking rewards. Um, then the other is the developer team. So about 25% of the rewards go to the development team on a daily epoch basis. Um, and then finally is the liquidity reward. So 45%, so the largest chunk, because once again, you know, we were really trying to build a platform that's great for the LPs and we want to make sure LPs are the ones who like sort of own the platform. So 45% of daily epoch rewards get given to, uh, distributed to LPs. And so how they get distributed to LPs is, um, wh- what happens is there's a process called bonding your liquidity. So what we wanted to avoid in osmosis was this sort of mercenary uh, capital, which like, you know, comes in and just like sucks up rewards and then just leaves or, you know, especially there's a lot of like, one of the things that we were also trying to do is really incentivize passive liquidity providing, which makes it easy for, um, you know, we want to make it so anyone can easily just put the liquidity into a pool and set and forget. But when you have people like coming in and adding liquidity, removing liquidity, uh, rapidly, this can like this ha- you know this hurts the more passive liquidity providers, and so we wanted to give something to benefit the give give the passive liquidity providers an extra edge, and that's why all the Osmo uh, rewards are only given to uh, sort of these bonded liquidity providers. Where what what that means is you take your LP shares from a pool and you bond them uh, into a lock and. You know, it works very similar to to like staking, where you know in staking you stake them, and then there's this like unbonding period whenever you decide to unbond unstake. Same thing happens with LP bonding as well. Um, and then governance basically decides, okay, which of these pools do we want to incentivize, and what is the minimum bonding time that we we want to incentivize these pools to have. So let's say governance says, hey, we want to give. Five percent of the LP rewards to the Adam Osmo pool uh, for people who stake longer than uh, who bond their uh, liquidity for at least one one day. So then, basically, that five percent of that forty five percent will be given to the to that we call these gauges, uh, and then it's distributed amongst everyone who who is bonded in a way that qualifies for that gauge, and so. The APY numbers can change 
basically based off of how many other people are also bonding liquidity for the same amount of time. Awesome. Um, yeah. So like, that's, that's really cool. So one question from, from the, uh, from the audience that, uh, came in is, um, so when I look, when I click on a pool, um, I see, uh, that there's a swap fee, uh, and if I go over to the osmosis.imperator.co page, I see um, I see that you know people are swapping, but there there are you know millions of dollars of daily you know millions of dollars of daily volume on Osmosis. Um, but you know where do these uh, where do these fees go? How do I uh, how do I make sense of, of, of what fees I've earned for my liquidity in addition to my uh, sweet sweet liquidity rewards? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, before I'll answer that, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is um, th these external incentives. So uh, Osmosis also makes it very easy for external parties to add incentives beyond just the base Osmo incentives. And so, you know, I think a, a, a number of the teams uh, behind some of the tokens that are already uh, on Osmosis, they are actually going to be adding these additional incentives. Uh, the Akash Network team, I think, you know, hopefully by end of day today, they'll be adding um, AKT incentives on top. So that way, if you're providing liquidity and qualify for one of the uh, gauges for one of the two uh, uh, AKT pool, one of the two main AKT pools, um, you'll be earning both awesome rewards, but as well as additional AKT as well. So that, that, that should be really exciting. And well, I know so a couple of the... Yeah, like tell me a little. I'm not honestly curious about what the workflow is. Do 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 those AKT rewards have to be put in a pool? Um, do do does does someone have to distribute them every you know around around the epoch time every day? Like what's the, what's the deal with that? Uh, yeah. So how the how the code flow works is that tokens get put into a gauge, and they get just all the tokens that are in a gauge get distributed at the end of the epoch. And so th this is sort of, so our, uh, the Osmo rewards also just use the same process to the incentives module. It's not any different where it's our mint module goes ahead and puts Osmo liquidity rewards into all of the relevant gauges. Um, and then, but anyone else can say, Hey, I want to put some AKT into this gauge as well. And at the end of the epoch, all those rewards from the gauge will be automatically distributed. So it's like it, it's 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 a twenty four hour fill cycle, right? Like somebody actually has to IBC the the AKT over and uh, send them to the gauge. Um, uh, no, because yeah, so so that's one option. But then we also we also have the ability for uh, someone to set up a program, we call it, where you can actually say, "Hey, I'm going to put up this um, million dollars, uh, million." AKT tokens, and I want these to be distributed over the next uh, fourteen epochs or something. And so it will it will split that evenly and and oh, that's do awesome. like uh, do it automatically, so you don't have to refill every single day. So we have we have the theme of uh, secret alpha uh, for liquidity providers here. Uh, I think our secret alpha, though you may it may be more widely known, but I didn't know this. This is new to me. Uh, is mm -hmm. that uh, AKT rewards are likely coming, and uh, in general, Osmosis is all set up for liquidity mining uh, for uh, for any Cosmos project. Uh, that's I think mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we have we have an Im imminent some main net. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's something for us to keep an eye on too. Yep. Um, and okay, and then so back to the um, uh, swap fees. So um, our our code base is. Uh, basically currently a clone of balancer. Um, and so in the balancer model uh, fees, so, so the swap fees get added to a pool directly uh, or they get, they sort of stay in, in a pool and affect the, just end up, you know, being reflected in the quantity of assets in the pool because they get charged in the fee being in, in the tokens being swapped. Um, and so, uh, basically, you'll 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 realize this uh, swap fee returns when you withdraw your liquidity. Because when you withdraw your liquidity, uh, you'll be getting back, you know, proportional to the number of LP shares outstanding. The, you'll you'll get that 
your your percentage of tokens in the pool and because the swap fees were added to the pool that's how you're going to get your cut of the swap fees nice so basically yeah. your you the way you the way your fees manifest is basically the size of your liquidity position is constantly Correct. increasing. Your, your liquidity like, position is increasing. Yeah. It's not kind of like what you know people always wanted for staking as well, where they're like, oh, why are my rewards not auto compounding? Well, in, in liquidity pools, it, this kind of happens automatically. Well, in Uniswap V2 balancer style liquidity pools. We, we Correct. have our Uniswap V3 liquidity pools, which have recreated the compounding challenge. <laughs> Um, right, right. It seems to be like sort of an existential challenge in the design space. Though the Cosmos SDK does give us a lot of tools, like you know, you know, the Epoch system that uh, that uh, Osmosis has has been introduced. I think is going to show up all over the Cosmos. And you know, when you have Epochs, mm -hmm. you can have things that trigger on yep. the Epoch boundary, like you know, restake everyone's mm -hmm. who's opted in. They'll you know rewards and stuff yep. like. We actually mm -hmm. built it as a generalized epochs module, so we should probably try to upstream that to the SDK soon. Because it, what, what we realized what was happening is in like all of our different modules, we kept trying to like re-implement epochs and like you know because there's a there's a different developer like working on each module, and each of them had these like slight differences, and then synchronizing epochs across modules was annoying. So then we're like, all right, you know what? Let's just build it one generalized epochs module, and. Uh, use the hooks system. What one of the we, we we love the hooks system. Like I think that is one of the features that like the Cosmos SDK has had for a long time, but it's not very heavily utilized. Um but we we like utilize it all over the place in our code base. So um yeah I, I think that, that 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 that's you know when, when we're talking about like interesting features that only the Cosmos SDK can give you. I think we talk often talk a lot about the end blocker, but I think the hooks are also like a huge one. Yeah. Um so hooks for for people who don't know are a mechanism by which events in one module can trigger actions in another module, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. So for for as an example of where we use this, right, is the airdrops module uh, or, or the claims module. But like, you know, if you notice that like. You know, you didn't have to do anything when, when you're claiming your airdrop. You don't have to do anything to go claim it. As soon as you did your first staking transaction or your first governance vote, the tokens automatically ended up in your account. And that's because we, we took advantage of the hooks where we were able to say that the, the claims module was able to hook into the governance module and say, hey, every time, as soon as this transaction, this uh, account does its first vote, let me know so I can just automatically distribute their uh, airdrop to them. Awesome. Um, cool. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about today? Um, I mean, I, I can talk. Of, I mean, I can talk about some of like the future stuff that we're working on, or do you prefer to keep it on sort of? More no, no on let's the... talk about the future. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so I can give, I can give a little bit of a summary of what we're working on, and then, we, then you can choose where what seems the most interesting to dive into. Um, so yeah, there's three, right. So I think there's a lot of design space where, where we can take osmosis now. Uh, we're trying to focus in on three main things right now. Uh, one is improving the AMMs. So, you know, like I said, osmosis started with more powerful AMMs and we took the most powerful one that we saw at the time, which was balancer. And we kind of cloned it onto the cosmos SDK, but I think there's a lot of design space left to go. Um, Dave and I were actually designing something uh where with like concentrated liquidity uh but you know we, we, we want we, we wanted something that's more passive uh than like uniswap v3 and so we were trying to design a concentrated liquidity system uh and then about two or three weeks ago curve v2 came out and we're like oh cool this is pretty similar to what we were trying to do um and so which is nice to know that we were on the right track um and so we're still you know we're, 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 we're still looking into Curve V2 right our, now. Our, like, our analysis over at Sommelier, though, is that uh, estimate, like exponential moving average drip, like we're using exponential moving averages right now in our, our pairings product for Uniswap V3. But like mm -hmm. we are, we've been, you know, our data science team has been looking at this and our theory is, is that exponential moving averages um, are not actually the right way to drive concentrated liquidity. So 
Um, mm. Let's see. Like uh, this is this is the uh, the curve. The curve, I think the curve question is basically two, it comes down to two things. One is, should concentrated liquidity for an entire pool um, move at once? Um, mm -hmm. And so this is, you know, you have this, uh, 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 I, there, I think there are two projects that sort of started to explore this on Ethereum. One is the integral finance, uh, uh, integral finance project. And the other one was, uh, uh, is curve, uh, curve V2 is, is, is like, say like, hey, we're going to move the entire, pools like uh, liquidity depth because uh, because we see um, uh, uh, you know in order to provide a low slippage right around the spot price um, and then the second question is mm -hmm. is how, how should the pool decide and I basically think it just comes like the future of AMMs is now is this like an on chain automated decision that it can this be done like you're gonna comp you're gonna run a competition between like a passive LP system with some sort of on-chain automated computation and something like, and then like a, an active LP system where you have off-chain mm -hmm. computation of where the, where the deepest liquidity should be. Um, I think it's pretty right. exciting. Uh, yeah, it's where also- Where does Sommelier fa fall in that? It feels somewhere in the middle, right? Um, like what well, we're Sommelier, like what well, the product that we're trying to build, Sellers, which is our kind mm -hmm. of our white whale right now, um, is uh, is a liquidity concentration system that is focused on. Well, okay, so I'll, you know I, I can talk about two things here. One is, you know, one is the one question is is this question of like you know. So the biggest problem with concentrated liquidity is moving your concentrated liquidity is a lossy function. So if you have these like fixed weighted pools, uh, you have impermanent loss, but you don't have any realized loss as the spot price moves. Um, yeah. In any sort of concentrated liquidity system, you realize your losses when you move the concentrated liquidity. Um, mm. And so there's like, there is a, it, it is a mm. loss function to move the concentrated liquidity. And mm. what, uh, 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 what the, um, you know, what something like Curve V2 is doing is it's basically saying, well, we're just going to, we're going to like fill the profits of the pool. Uh, uh, up to a certain like watermark, uh, mm -hmm. and then once the profits have crossed that mar watermark, we're going to be like we, we, uh, relative to like the cost of moving the concentrated liquidity. We're going to move. We're going to like once we've crossed that watermark, then we move. Um, mm -hmm. Which in a com it, like has a degen has like an has like a degenerate condition, right? Like like you're you're like in a in a competitive marketplace where let's say there's a Uniswap v3 and there is a uh, 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 a curve v, uh, v2 pool for the same set of assets uh, like the spot price moves then mm -hmm. the spread like the spread on Uniswap v2 now is or curve v2 is now worse than the spread on Uniswap v3 um, because people had you know you know because there's more liquidity moved there now the uh, trading volume on curve V2 goes down uh, mm -hmm. and then you don't ever get, or it takes you know, a long time to reach that watermark where it's, where you have accrued mm -hmm. enough profit to afford moving. Uh, mm -hmm. And in the same, because like everyone starts trading on Uniswap V3 because the slippage is low. Um, I see. Yeah. And that, that is, that is to me the uh, like, it's going to be, that's going to be a real interesting thing to like, keep track mm -hmm. of in, in, in curve V2 world is like, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the thing everyone is asking about Uniswap V3 is like when you have all of this volatility and suddenly like, you know, uh, you don't have any liquidity where the spot price is now. Um, and, yeah. uh, and slippage goes up and, you know, there's that about Uniswap V3, but like a lot of work to mature the tooling around that. Mm -hmm. And so what the equilibrium of these systems are is, I don't know. Uh, but, Sommelier really believes that we can build great tooling for Uniswap V3 type, type systems. Um, and I now, and then there's a second area. The second area is really, um, is, uh, is options. Um, and probably like my biggest belief, my biggest alpha right now is that liquid, like at the end of the day, um, a li liquidity providers, especially when you get out of this like bootstrapping era of, of liquidity rewards, um, 
need access to options in order for any of this to work um, mm -hmm. is it's not like essentially you are like being a liquidity provider, you need access to like what is effectively a structured product um, because yeah. you need to be able to like be like leveraged long uh, 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 volatility because your LP position is short volatility. Um, right. And that's the, that's the only way in which you're ever going to make up the, uh, the losses. And so like, this is especially true in sort of, in sort of any sort of concentrated liquidity system, because you need to offset uh, the losses from, you know, realize the, uh, the, the, the cost of realizing your losses and moving to a new spot price with the gains from an options position. Like this is the only way this is ever going to work in the long run. Um, and I, so I just generally think it's like, it's, we're sort of in an arms race to build this product. Um, hmm. that's the sommelier view of the world. Um, okay. So right. we could, uh, we go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, I mean, so this is actually all really interesting insight about the Kirby two stuff. I mean, so to be completely honest, we were not really thinking about the, um, we, we were designing the curve side of it right now, like the actual algorithm side. And we were just saying like, all right, we're going to have some Oracle price. Like, oh, maybe we're, maybe we're just marking making around the validators Oracles. Um, but our goal Which was just trying very to figure similar out to what integral did. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah so yeah, our goal was to figure out approach. how um, do we concentrate the liquidity, but then also make it so that validators don't, the, the, the LPs don't suffer high impermanence loss. So it was like something where it's like, okay, you concentrate the liquidity right around this, the Oracle price, but then you decrease the concentration in the middle band, like, uh, you know, a little bit farther away, and then you bring it back to normal so a little bit farther away. So that that's sort of how we were thinking about it there. This is a, f I will just, I will explain like this is that that to me looks functionally equivalent to a strategy that you are seeing in a lot of the current generation like the early generations of uniswap v3 automated rebalancers where what mm -hmm. they do is they have sort of out of the money uh limit orders um mm -hmm. to sort of where the out of the money limit orders let you buy into swings of the of the of the spot price um effectively that's doing the same thing with the pool where it's like if volatility mm -hmm. goes up, you buy in at the like at the at, at the swing, um, which sort of helps you offset your losses. Um, oh, cool. From, yeah. uh, but like that is significantly worse than owning an option, like yep. a call option at that swing price. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's well, that's why I think like the uh, you know like you've been very involved in like you know, all of the open and Zubin's work on like on, on options. And I really think that like a big part of like the future of this AMM space is going to be merging the options work and the LP provider work into some sort of coherent system that makes sense. Um, so that like, instead of having like a bunch of liquidity sitting on the edges of Around, like further out from the spot price, you have own a bunch of options further out from the spot price um, that you can yeah. then sell the, or or you can realize if the because uh, uh, it's much more capital efficient. Would it sort of almost be the difference between like using an option versus using a stop loss? Um, because you at the stop loss, you have to have the full like you have to have the full amount of. Uh, yeah. tokens like out, like not collecting fees and uh not collecting fees and sitting out there whereas um you get you can like sort of partially collateral you, you get some sort of either implicit or actual leverage depending on uh what option system you are you were you were doing on uh on that so you you can you can realize multiples of the capital that was deployed rather than um only the capital that was deployed got it that's pretty cool um well then let me go on to the All second right. piece. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, do the second piece, and then we'll we'll, we'll close it out with like a, 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 a you know the uh, the ion question. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, uh, I'll say quickly number two and three. Number two is threshold decryption to stop front running. I think front running is sort of one of the biggest problems that is plaguing a lot of decentralized exchanges, and so uh, we have a solution like a cryptographic solution that sort of. Uh, makes it impossible to front run. And it's a generalized solution that's not just Redexes. You know, 
There's ideas like batch execution stuff. Those are still only for DEXs and they they don't solve censorship issues. And you know, you you really do need like strong mempool privacy in order to solve it. And so that's one of the things we're working on. And then the third one is uh, what we're calling superfluid staking. Uh, what what it is is it's a way of. I'm really excited <laughs> about superfluid staking. By the way, like I think. Thank it's you. Really cool. Yeah. It's a, it's a very specific type of staking derivative where it's taking the stance that you don't want your staked assets to become liquid, but what you can do is instead put stuff in the other direction where you allow people to use your staking token in DeFi, and then they can stake the DeFi asset. And so this will make, and so, so in the, specifically in our case would be, you're able to take a Osmo and some other asset, uh, put them into an LP pool, and then take your LP shares and stake them. And then, you know, there's all this stuff you have to do with like risk account accounting. And that's why we're working with like Tarun, who, you know, he, wrote, he already wrote a paper on how to borrow against LP shares, which will probably be highly relevant to this. Um, and yeah, this way users don't have to decide between staking and LPing anymore. And, you know, one of the things that people have been, have showed a little bit of concern about is saying like, hey, the staking rewards is only 25% of the total rewards on the system. Isn't this insecure? And to an extent, a little bit, it is yes right now. But when, once you get the super fluid staking, the staking rewards and LP rewards will really sort of start through combine into one thing. And so that will that's where when we'll get like the sort of proper security design of the system. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that is, you know, is that, you know, and I've been debating this with with people in governance is like, about governance is like, you know, with 45 percent of of the of the Osmo creation going to. Uh, uh, liquidity provider rewards. Um, eventually, like we're we're you're not you, it doesn't take that much uh, staking of Osmo for now staking to be for the staking pool to be like you you're getting net diluted by staking, um, mm -hmm. and you need to be in and be providing liquidity in order to uh, to not be diluted. I I uh, like I think this is fine for two reasons. One is. Um, you know, I, I'm not super worried that, you know, someone is going to show up with like vast quantities of, of atoms and XR, uh, uh, and Akash and all these other tokens and like suddenly like drain all of the Osmo out of the pool and then stake it and then take over the network. Um, this doesn't seem to be like that likely a scenario to me. Uh, but like, yeah, this is a, this is a big thing. If you hold Osmo to keep, keep, keep an eye on, like mm -hmm. you, you Osmo providers have to know how to be liquid. If you want, if you want us to keep your, you know, keep your fraction of Osmo growing or fraction of Osmo the same, uh, you gotta, you gotta be learn to be a liquidity provider, which I think has has been, which is I think like a really cool set of game theory to to set up. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it was well timed for for me because I, I, you know, I've been living the liquidity provider tooling and like how do you be a liquidity provider life for uh, for the last six months? So. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Um, okay, Let, let's talk about ions. Uh, 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 okay, without answering the question, what is an ion? What are the character like? What are the characteristics of ions that have appeared on the chain? Like, what is the what is the like sort of ion story thus far? Yeah. So the ion story is okay. Maybe I can tell the history of ions. The history of ions goes that. Uh, I wanted the smallest denomination of of Osmo to be called Ions, uh, like so you know, Theta has waste, Bitcoin has Satoshi's. I wanted it to be Ions, uh, but uh, Dogemo said no because he's like, you're making the life of all the wallets harder. Please stick to the Cosmos standards, which is to use like a metric prefix. Um, and so we're like, okay, fine, we'll do that. Uh, but then when it came to all the test nets and stuff, we were it basically was like, oh. Uh, I, well, it's an AMM. I need a second token with, 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 with which to test our AMMs. Uh, and so I just created a second token on the chain called ION. So that way, while well, testing I was testing Osmo against ION. And then two nights before the launch of Osmosis, I had a sudden stroke of inspiration where I'm like, hey, what if we just launch this on chain, like on the main net? Because, like, you know, we have it on all our, all our test nets. We've been testing with it. Let's just put it on the mainnet and also just see what people do with it. Um, and we don't, we didn't really have an idea of what it was for. Uh, and so we came up with a 
distribution. I, I, I spent like, I pulled an all nighter two nights before writing a script to like, to like create the distribution. Um, and we just airdropped it and had it on the chain. And then what's really cool is a community really started to form around it and they've just been like, you know, really running with it and like trying to figure out what are the use cases of it or like coming up with cool use cases for it. Um, and I don't know, I really think it, it I, I think that eventually we will find something that, and, and it's just like the amount of debate and excitement this has gotten. I, it really reminds me of like the early Dogecoin community a little bit where it's like, I remember that I got, I got into crypto because of Dogecoin. And I remember it was like, you know, early on the Dogecoin community was like, you know, sponsoring Jamaican bobsled teams, funding clean water projects and like doing all this like cool stuff by using the token as this like shelling point uh, for a community organization. And I think IONS is like really doing something similar right now. And so, I mean, it reminds like, me a lot of like the Sox community, right? Um, yes. And I think that's a lot of the, uh, uh, a, a lot of the of, of the vibe and the spirit of, uh, of ions but uh yeah uh thank you for the ions uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and thank you from the community for giving us a, 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 a cool shelling point to figure out yeah i'm really excited to see what they do and i, I think there's like fun memes and stuff to ha be had with it you know i have my ion eyes uh <laughs> on my profile picture <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you get uh, very fancy ions. So I'm sure you have a lot of work to get to. I don't want to take any more of your time. Uh, thank you, and uh, and uh, you know we uh, we are excited. I'm 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 excited to figure out how Sommelier is going to engage with with Osmosis uh, uh, and and what we can build on top of Osmosis as well. Uh, I think Sweet. probably we need to like the most exciting thing for us would be when we upgrade to a version of the Cosmos SDK that supports interchain accounts. Um, yep. So that like we could like Chris could have like sort of similar to like what we're doing on uh, on Ethereum uh, via the gravity bridge kinds of, of mm -hmm. you know, automated farming and stuff like that on, on Osmosis. Cool. Yeah, that would be really fun. Uh, Interchain accounts is like really important. So yeah, we're, we're, we'll be working on that soon too. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Sonny. Thank you. All right.